short demonstration of how to model electric lights in Honeybee. And uh, you can understand electric lights similarly to the way you understand skies. Um, they're a source of light, but an electric light is importantly different in the way that the distribution of luminance is characterized. So I will explain as I uh, introduce the components. Under a zero to daylight, you'll see actually a Honeybee IES luminaire, and I'm going to import that into the canvas. And um, we're going to need to um, uh, to populate some of these inputs. So the first one is an IES file path. An IES photometry file is a file that describes the intensity of illumination from a light source geometrically um, for its, uh, its the light source's distribution. And these can be downloaded from manufacturers' websites most commonly. And um, I've actually got a few here that um, I've prepared. Uh, these are simply halogen MR16s, uh, and there's a 40-degree flood, a 26-degree narrow flood, a 13-degree spot, and a 60-degree wide flood. I've also got a linear direct four-foot um, LED here. So I'm going to show you a couple of these, and um, you'll be able to see how they work. But um, So the first thing I do is enter a file path and set that to one of those files. I'm going to pick the, I'll pick the um, spot first, 13 degrees, and I'm going to plug that right into the IES file path. And then I need a luminaire zone. The luminaire zone is up here. There's a component. And this is going to be the way that the um, we can assign a geometric point for each IES file to reside. And so I'm going to plug in a luminaire zone into luminaire zone. And I'm going to um, identify a list of points that, um, that, that will be the place, the origin for the IES file to originate. So I'm going to type in points. Oops, not those points. Point and hook that up, and then I'm going to define multiple points. In this case, we want, you know, have these three spots be um, the, the points, and I've already identified here uh, a point at each, um, at each place. So I'm going to start, the order matters, you'll see why in a second. I'm going to start here, and I wonder if this is not on. point, point, and point. And notice that the blue line um, connects those three points. So you can see the order in which you're assigning them. I'm going to hit OK. And now um, the, um, this populates. And now I'm going to assign an aiming point for each of those as well. In this case, I want to aim those at the canvases. So I'm going to select in the same order, one, two, and three. And um, that should be good. Now I need a light. I, I, it's optional to input a light loss factor or a candela multiplier. I'm going to leave that as it is for now. That's simply a fraction that will um, reduce or increase the lumen output of the uh, light fixture. Uh, custom luminaire name. So I'm going to name this as a uh, 13 degree spot. I think that's what I. Yes, 13 degree spot. And if I want to, I can input a custom lamp um, using um, uh, custom color components. I'm not going to show you that right now. So I've got all of the things that I really need. Um, 
I need to also specify a radiance directory for my IS file, and I'm going to go back to my, where's the directory? There. And now I need to write the rad file. Boom. Uh, now I simply take the rad file path and I drag it into the additional rad files while pressing shift to add it. I've got the wire display turned off here. So uh, there you go. You can see where it's going. Since I want this to be a dark sky so I can actually see the electric lights on for this demonstration, I'm going to unplug the sky file path, which was my daylight sky. And I need to include a dark sky. So luckily we've got one here, Honeybee Generate Dark Sky. I'm gonna plug that into my sky file just for this demonstration. And um, we should be good to go. I'm going to let this run. The screens are launching in the other screen and looks like we should have some results. There you go. So you can see the three spotlights on those three uh, paintings. Now, just for the sake of demonstration, I'm going to also show you what it is like with a different IES file. So I'm going to set a file path to a wide flood now. So this is a 60 degree flood and do the same thing again. And and you can see now that um, we've got a, a larger distribution or wider distribution of each of those uh, lights. So you can, um, that's what the photometric distribution does. And for each uh, unique type, we need to set up a different uh, zone, a uh, luminaire zone. So, um, so that's why in the template file, you can see I've got this set up for 13 degree spots, which are, um, let's see if I can do this here. The 13 degree spots are, are these three. The 40 degree spot, which, are, which is just this one here. And then a 60 degree spot, which is this one over here. Which I don't remember what this one is. This must be a 13 degree as well. Be this one, yeah. So this one is also a 13 degree spot. So, um, so all you have to do when you import this is to set the IES file path um, right here, um, and you should download those IES files from the shared class folder, um, and then write them, and should be good to go. One more thing to notice here is that the light distribution from the lights is different than the geometry of the luminaires. So the fixtures, the fixture geometry is different than the light that comes out of them. Light distribution is assigned, but the geometry associated with the fixtures is not. In order to assign the geometry, this then is, has to be a material. And you can see that in our template file, the lights are assigned a, a white material, and that needs to be exported as a mesh, the same as any other material. So make sure you keep straight in your head the difference between the fixture housing and the light that's coming out of it.